Welcome to Buchake English for Teens. I'm Sean Connolly. And I'm Robbie L. Let's get started by watching today's skit. What's this called again? It's Kakizome, the first calligraphy of the year. Oops! Samir, you're such a klutz! It looks like mountains characters? Samir, you're a genius! I'm keeping this! Uh-oh, that's not a good start to the year for Samir. Yeah, ink on the curtains? That's never gonna come out. Right. If that were at my house, I'd be furious. But it seems Mia was actually pleased with Samir's happy little accident. It looks like it gave her an idea for the fashion line she's working on. That's right. By a stroke of luck, the ink actually landed in the shape of a kanji character. Uh, what character was it again? Did you say again? That's today's point. It was the character for Mountain, by the way. In the video, you heard Mia say, what's this called again? When asking Anna about kakizome. This again, at the end of a question, is used to ask for information you previously knew or have been told, but have since forgotten. Therefore, we can assume that Anna told Mia the name for Kakizome before, and Mia simply forgot. Exactly. You should note that we often use this again at the end of 5W1H questions. Remind me, uh, what are they again? They're who, what, where, when, why, and how. Oh yeah, now I remember. Let's take a look at some examples where we can use again. Repeat after us. When's your birthday again? You got it. What's your cat's name again? Very nice. Where are you going this summer again? Excellent. How are we getting to the party again? Perfect. Those are some pretty great examples, weren't they? Uh, what's your name again? It's Robbie. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Now I guess it's time to wrap things up. Over to you, Rodney. Actually, it's your turn to wrap things up. Uh, are you feeling oh, okay? Right. Sorry, Rupert. And now on to, uh, you know, where Anna made a little English mistake and we talk about it. And uh, what's it called again? Itago. Come on, let's get you home. Here's this week's Itago. Our Itago point for today is about how Anna described the ink stain on the curtain. That's right. She said, it looks like Mountain's character, which isn't quite right. As the apostrophe S structure is used for possession, Mountain's character sounds like the Mountain owns the character, which sounds a bit strange. Exactly. In this case, Anna should have said, it looks like the character for Mountain. This structure of A for B is often used with things like symbols, signs, and numbers. Right. It's used to describe when one thing is representing another. Let's take a look at a few more situations where we can use this structure. If you're feeling a bit hungry but don't want to cook, you could ask, What's the phone number for Pizza Pacific? Or, if you're discussing cute characters, you could say, Polo the polar bear is the mascot for North University. If you're in chemistry class, your teacher might tell you something like, 
AU is the chemical symbol for gold. Sean, you're good at science, right? Yeah, it was my favorite subject in high school. What's the chemical symbol for copper? CU. Oh, uh, are you going now? Uh, see you later? No, see you. Bye for now. See you next week. No, the chemical symbol for copper is CU. Okay, bye. Look, if you don't know the answer, just say so. Sheesh. Ugh, I give up. I guess we'll never know what the chemical symbol for copper is. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to try these phrases out and don't forget to have fun. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. See you next week.